Hello there, I am Dr. Camacho. In this video, we will talk about oral appliances or mandibular advancement devices as treatment for snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. And I've had several hundred patients who use oral appliances as their treatment of choice. Generally speaking, you want to go to a dental sleep medicine specialist. So this is a dentist who specializes in sleep medicine. I generally don't recommend making an oral appliance yourself. There are those you can buy online or in the stores that you boil and you bite. In my experience, they don't tend to work well. And in the literature, they don't work as well as these custom-made devices that a dentist who specializes in sleep medicine is able to make for you. Now, when you see your dentist, they're not just going to hand you one of these. It usually takes a while to make it. So what they do is you come in for a visit. They're going to make impressions of your teeth. This is where they put a material on your lower jaw, upper jaw on the teeth. You bite down, hold it, it solidifies, and then they're able to make the impressions and use this to make a splint for you. Another more recent technology is that they can take photos of your teeth and use that to make the exact um, same type of splint. It goes off to a lab and it comes back. It can take a few weeks to make these, so just be ready for that. It's not an immediate uh, process. So how do these devices treat snoring and obstructive sleep apnea? Well, you can see in this skull, who's wearing one, that the lower jaw is pulled forward. You see that? So there's a little clasp on the bottom uh, jaw that holds it forward. Usually all you need is about five to six millimeters to open the airway. The reason it works is because there's muscles of the tongue that attach to the lower jaw. So when you move your lower jaw forward, the tongue muscles go forward and it opens the airway. And in most cases, you just need those few five to six millimeters to open the airway. They are fairly comfortable. It usually takes a while to get used to it. I'll demonstrate. So this is uh, my oral appliance. You put it in the upper jaw, lower jaw, and notice how my lower jaw moves forward when I do this. It actually took me a few days to get used to it, but it's very comfortable and it's a great alternative to CPAP, especially if you're going on a trip, if you uh, don't want to take the machine with you. This is a, a good alternative in most people. However, studies have shown that it's great for snoring, it's great for mild obstructive sleep apnea, and it's also good for moderate sleep apnea. Studies have shown, however, that if a patient has severe obstructive sleep apnea, they're less likely to have this work very well for treatment of sleep apnea. So it all depends on how bad your snoring and obstructive sleep apnea are. So what are the pros and cons? In general, the pros are it's comfortable, it's easy to use, very portable, lightweight, you can take it on short trips. You can take it when you go hunting or camping. And generally speaking, for snoring and sleep apnea, if it's mild or moderate, then it tends to work pretty well. The downsides are they can get a little expensive, costing several hundred or even a few thousand dollars, depending on the healthcare professional. Something you need to ask up front so that you're aware before you go see the dentist. The other downsides are some people can get temporomandibular joint pain. So when the lower jaw moves forward, you can see if we use the skull that the temporomandibular joint kind of comes out of the socket a little bit and slides forward. So if I take the oral appliance out, you can see that there's actually a gap here and if I take the appliance out that gap tends to go away because normally 
the bone from the lower jaw sits into the socket and with the oral appliance to get it to work the teeth have to come down and forward and you can see it it can put a little bit of tension and pressure on the joint most of the time it's not very uncomfortable but for some people it can be a problem and that's also why you want to see a dentist who specializes in dental sleep medicine because they're very trained in uh, temporomandibular joint disorders and they can help you make sure that the device is working properly for you now as far as the effectiveness for snoring it's fairly easy your bed partner is going to tell you last night you were snoring or you were very quiet so that that's not a problem the issue more is how well is it working to treat your obstructive sleep apnea unless you do a sleep study you're not going to know just how effective this is generally speaking you can say yes i'm less sleepy i'm less tired i snore less i feel refreshed but in order to truly tell if your oral appliance is effectively treating your sleep apnea you need to have a sleep study sometimes there's issues with well if your oral appliance is working is your insurance still going to cover your cpap machine they're going to say just use your oral appliance so a lot of people because they want to have the cpap machine they'll just use their oral appliance as a supplement for traveling or times when they're camping or tired of using the machine this is a great alternative but in general most people prefer to use the CPAP machine for home and use the oral appliance for breaks from CPAP or for camping and traveling another thing you should be aware of is that when you take your oral appliance out in the morning you will want to put on this other device that basically will put your teeth back into their normal position because all night you've had your lower jaw forward, so this is gonna kinda of help reset it, so to speak. You just put it in the morning. You can wear it for 30 to 60 minutes, and that helps to reset your jaw. Another thing you wanna do is make sure you store it in the container that came with it. I always rinse it off in the morning and I use my toothbrush to clean it. That way um, it'll last longer and it'll stay more hygienic. And I usually leave it open to air dry because that helps to dry it out and kill any bacteria or viruses that may be on the surface. Personally, I'm a big fan of oral appliances. I think it's a great alternative to positive airway pressure therapy. In general, I think positive airway pressure therapy, CPAP, APAP, BiPAP should be tried first. Second would be an oral appliance. The exception is in patients who have huge tonsils, you may wanna pursue tonsillectomy before considering positive airway pressure therapy or CPAP. I hope you learned a little bit more about oral appliances. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.